Before we get going, here's a brief recap of where we started. We created an app service. Um, we created a public IP address. And that public IP address we have connected to a virtual machine, which has an NSG attached to it. And that was sitting inside of a subnet. Um, and that subnet was sitting inside of our private network. Now, at the end of our last video, we had a fully working demo of an app service making an HTTP call into our network. We created a simple HTTP application in .NET that our service was able to hit here. This satisfies the first of three capabilities that app services have for interacting with a private cloud network. The first, VNet integration, allows app services to have access to your network. We'll be talking about the second today, private endpoints, which allows services in your network to communicate with your app service as though they were sitting in the network as well. Using this technique, we can disable the public access to our app service and call it using only its private IP. We'll actually need to create a new resource and basically that private endpoint is going to be associated with this app service. And whenever you want to access the app service, you basically make a call using the IP address of the private endpoint. Now, of course, we know that app services don't work with IP addresses and you actually need a host name in order for it to resolve. Well, Azure has an answer for it. A private DNS zone file in which you can specify, like any other zone file, host names and the IP addresses that they map to. And what we then do is we connect this with the actual virtual network that we're using. Once this is done, any request that's made to the domain for the app service, which will be sitting in here, will give, instead of the public IP address that's sitting somewhere out here, will give this private IP address as the address to use. So with all that said, let's get going. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to have to re enable that public IP address that we disabled. We need to do this because we're going to be essentially using this VM as the test VM to test out um, accessing our app services using a private IP address as opposed to the public IP address. So I'm basically going to reselect the public IP address that we previously used and disabled. And now that that's saved, we go ahead and we try to access the public URL. And as you can see, this works just fine. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're basically going to disable uh, the public access to this app service. Uh, so once we disable it, uh, we should not be able to access the app service directly uh, from uh, any endpoint, uh, no matter what. Um, again, remember that by default, so we're going to disable it right now. So we just save that. Remember that by default, um, it's going to route through the public uh, URL for it. Um, so we're going to switch that now. And as you can see, this IP address demo to client azurewebsites.net uh, actually does not resolve anything. So the next thing we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to actually create uh, that resource, uh, the private uh, endpoint resource. And I do have a video on the channel that talks about private endpoints. So we're not going to go into a lot of detail here because, again, the purpose of this is to really illustrate what app services can do with your networking. So we're going to select websites here and we're going to select the actual resource that we're interested in, the actual site. And then we now pick the network that we're connecting to. And we're just going to use the regular uh, default network. Nothing special here. Um, and over here, we specify uh, the DNS zone for the zone file that's going to be automatically created. 
um, and you can see that it's giving uh, the configuration name and it's also providing what the host name of the resource is going to be uh, when you want it to be accessed via this private endpoint. So now that we've created that, let's go ahead and let's just refresh uh, private endpoints that's associated to our site. So it's right there, just double checking so we can click our refresh. And then if we go back, we should now actually see that it's showing as one private endpoint uh, right here. And you can also see that here's the actual IP address um, that this resolves to, and we can I can show more explicitly in a minute. So let's now go ahead and let's do an NS lookup for this. Um, and you'll see that the, when we do the NS lookup, it's still showing the public IP, and I'll show that in a second. It's showing this 20 dot um, IP address, which is the public IP address. And you can see here that um, this is the actual public IP um, that it's using. That's what it's resolving to. So in order to change that, what we do need to do is we need to have the private link be associated uh, with a virtual network. So let's go ahead and let's click on that. And we're going to add it to the appropriate network, which is demo two. And we're also going to, after we do this, we'll link enable auto registration. Great, now that's added. Now let's go back and let's do another NS lookup. And you can see now that it is now resolving uh, to the local address 10.0.0.5, which is the address of the private link. So now that we have uh, this all set up, um, let's basically start our demo server because um, it hasn't been running all this while. And now that it's listening, um, we're able to actually call it and you can see that it's even responding. Um, and right now what's actually happening is that it is actually making a call from here to the public facing app service, but using the private IP address. And then that's bouncing back to me um, on this um, 10.0.0.4 IP address. And then it's actually um, hitting our server and our server is running. And that's why each time we, re we run it, we'll see this listening. Because if you recall, that was part of the code base that we wrote to indicate when a call had hit uh, our service. We can test it out, just randomize it a bit, and you can see a new listening shows up and it properly does what it's supposed to do. And just so you guys see, um, here's what happens when we run this uh, directly from uh, my laptop. And as you can see, we're using the same demo client.azurewebsites.net, but because um, we've disabled public access, we're not going to be able to actually hit uh, this service uh, publicly. We can only hit it using that private um, address. And of course, if we go back to RDP, uh, we can just refresh it again. And as you can see, that works absolutely fine. In this video, we've shown you how to convert a public facing app service into a private app service by using private endpoints. Private endpoints are a capability that allow you to extend your public facing app service such that it can be addressed using an internal IP address. Functionally speaking, using this technique, you should have an app service that can function as an intranet site. Hope you enjoyed the video. Tune in for the conclusion next week.